This one may be a little different. I've been sick the last little while, and so my voice hasn't been holding up for these kinds of long term, long duration chats. So we'll see what happens. As is often the case, I sat down and any semblance of a plan that I had for what I was about to draw or paint seemed to vanish. So we're just going to work. We're going to see what happens. <clears throat> I'm not caring too much about really anything. I'm just trying to block in baselines, features. Enough to give me an idea of if things are in the right place or if they're not. I haven't drawn or painted like this in a while. Used to do it a lot when I was in high school. I'll start these quick watercolor paintings. would then take ink back over the top later to clarify things. It was a kind of nice, low stress way of doing things. And low stress is often a really beneficial thing. Try not to do too much that's down off the side of the paper there. But sometimes when you're working with long, flowy hair, you find yourself at its mercy, and you just kind of keep going, you kind of keep going. I was thinking the other day about what my goal is with these sketching sessions. Why I'm putting them out there, why I'm doing them, what it is about this that prompts me to continue making them. And I think that's always a good thing to consider. Anything that you're putting time into, it's good to take some time periodically and try to analyze and figure out why. What's your goal? What are you trying to What are you trying to accomplish? And I think that what I'm hoping is that 
as you watch something like this, as you watch me struggle and sometimes succeed, as you watch the pieces take form, sometimes they work out well, sometimes not so much, sometimes they take, take a different path than I was anticipating, maybe a different path than you were anticipating as you're watching. I'm hoping that it's encouraging. I'm hoping that you have the ability to analyze and see how just one other artist works through things. I'm just human. I don't have all the answers. I probably have a very small quantity of the answers, but I am just another human and I make things. And I hope that by watching how I make things, there's some vindication in how you make things. Maybe there's some encouragement to make more things. Maybe there's an excitement to try something that you hadn't. Sometimes when you look at someone's finished work, you can find it almost overwhelming because you can't wrap your head around how it came into being. Well, I'm hoping that watching these funny little drawings and paintings and sketches come into being, you're able to understand that it's not magic. It's, it's practice and it's like building a house. It's just one brick after another, putting things together. I make mistakes all the time. Probably the vast majority of the marks that I make are not correct. But the marks allow me to know more about what it is that I'm doing. The marks allow me to understand what needs to happen next. You can start working through some of the fear by just getting marks on the page because those first marks should have very little pressure. They just allow you to understand and gauge what they are and what they need to be. I started off on this one getting in what I thought the forehead was gonna be and it was not the right shape. And then I did this side over here and the facial structure was all messed up, but I couldn't know that until I started to put things down. And in so doing, I'm able to give myself some knowledge about what needs to happen, what this piece requires. And this piece is now coming into its own. It's starting to exist. It's starting to tell me things. And I'm just trying to listen. So my hope is that as you watch, as you listen, that you're encouraged. And encouraged perhaps to do your own work, and maybe encouraged to try something new, and maybe just encouraged that the way that you're doing things is okay. Art is hard. There's a lot that goes into it. And unfortunately, we have a tendency to make it harder on ourselves than it needs to be. It's very human. all too easy to get excited about a piece and then it begins to not turn out the way that you anticipated and then abandon it. I've done that way more times than I would like to admit, but I don't think that it's bad to admit it. And if you're an artist, if you've ever done anything creative, I would assume that you've probably been in a similar position on many occasions where you either have given up or you've greatly desired to give up because things were not turning out the way you wanted. If you want to improve, if you want to get better, 
I think it becomes very essential to push past that, to understand that as a normal part of the journey. Certainly not part that we enjoy, but maybe a part that we can at least come to appreciate. I think another reason why I'm here, why I think doing these drawing and sketching sessions can be beneficial is it, it helps me. I sort through my thoughts while I work. I have given myself deadlines, artificial and real, to do this and to record things. And it means that I keep working. I have an impetus to continue on a day where I might get up and not feel like making art I can sit there and go now nah, like I I was planning on recording something I was planning on putting something together and I'm just hoping that for each thing I do that somebody is encouraged that someone feels like their struggle is understood their struggle is seen. They're not alone in this. They've got other people who are like them. Or maybe everything you see online feels like it comes together effortlessly and you can be encouraged by watching my stuff come together and realize that, oh, no, like sometimes things take a while. Um, sometimes it takes a long time for something to start looking good. And sometimes it never looks good. And that's okay. I had that in a couple sketchbook sessions ago where I had a drawing that turned out really well for the first 45 minutes or so. And then I started doing a little robot drawing at the end and I was really unhappy with it, but I kind of laughed about it because that's just the reality. The past couple days, I've had several batches of drawings that I've been working on something and it's been turning out really well. And then I, I get ahead of myself or just my, my time has come. <laughs> my artistic energies are kaput for a moment, whatever the case may be. And uh, the next piece just doesn't turn out well. That's, that's okay. I mean, I hate it, but I also know that there's no way around it. And so I choose to be okay with it. I don't know what the alternative is. <laughs> I mean, even though watercolor is so temperamental, I just, I enjoy it. I always have. I felt like it was one of the first artistic media that really made sense to me. And it is temperamental. I know a lot of people and a lot of my students over the years were really scared about watercolor. And I, I understand that. I think maybe for me, we've had a long enough relationship. We've, we've come to a couple understandings about things. And I know that it's just good for me. It's good for me because I want to have control over everything and watercolor is just not, not controllable in its entirety. So I know that it's a good thing for me to spend time with this because it helps me be more human. colors that I'm using here are not particularly accurate to the reference that I'm using. I've been concentrating on the value structures, which is far more important. You can kind of do whatever you want with colors as long as the values stay the same. Because it's watercolor, I'm working in the darker values later, but I also get impatient, which you've seen a lot on this already, 
or I'll do a little bit of something and then have to go to something else. And maybe in my brain, I convince myself that, well, I need to let that dry, so I'm gonna go work over here. And, and there is some truth to that. There's also just, I, I get really scatterbrained and bored on tiny little pieces of things. So I continue to move throughout the piece. because it feels terribly inefficient. Because that's the right way to look at it. That's the right way to look at it. Oh. <laughs> Not dry over there yet. night in the middle of the night and some random thumps and noises on the deck so got up and I opened, I, I looked out on the deck from our bedroom and there was a large shape on our deck and it was slinking across towards our dining room table. Not dining room table, dining room um, window. And I had just woken up, so I had this like weird, like, oh my goodness, it's a mountain lion. And then I had the moment of, oh, dang it, it's gonna be trying to eat our cats. So I opened the window and yelled at it and this massive shape just slinked off. No fear of me whatsoever. No, no fear. Just oh, that's a that's a minor inconvenience. I guess I'll just go about my business. It's wonderful and very cool to live out here and have things like that around, but it reminds you that you are fragile. It reminds you that you are human and that there are things that are bigger than you stronger than you, and perhaps most importantly, outside of your control. I'm happy to report that at least the two cats that we take care of around here are, uh, they're accounted for this morning, so they're, they're good. We've got two others that kind of touch base with us a couple times a week, come and get a snack, and then go about their business. And we'll have to make sure that they're okay. But at least this morning, Marshmallow and Panda Cat are okay. So that's good. Told my daughter about it, and she was not phased at all. No fear. Just like, that's so cool. Daddy, isn't that so cool? 
It's like, yeah, it's really cool, but like... Our cats almost got eaten. <laughs> She's like, but they did not. She's got like no latent anxiety about things. She's just like, yes, that could have happened, but it didn't, Dad, so it's fine. Like, now we just get to live in the coolness of the fact that there was a mountain lion on our deck. Ah, oh, the simpleness of, uh, <laughs> of that manner of youth. This is the part where it gets a little bit more fun to me. Where I'm mostly <laughs> I'm mostly confident now that like it'll turn out and that it'll look alright. And so that's when it starts to be more exciting. I mean I could still be wrong. I could still like royally mess it up. But at least right now it looks like a thing. It'll be you know, it'll exist. It'll be something, and it won't be ridiculously terrible so <laughs> that's kind of when it's like okay cool like I, I feel all right about this let me move this up a little bit
Oh, foot's asleep. Probably a bad idea. I probably should wait a little while to make sure that the pen is dry, but...
that might be it for today's sketch.